EasyLab is an electronic laboratory fully virtual, which includes the main instruments you can find in a real one. The performances of the electronic instruments are similar and present the main operating functions of the actual ones. There is a two-channel digital scope with the main functions. There is an analog signal generator which allows to select different waveforms as the sinusoidal one, the triangular and the square waveform. There is a two-channel analog oscilloscope, a digital frequency and time interval counter, a spectrum analyzer, an analog voltmeter, a two-channel vector voltmeter which measures amplitude and phase. There is a synthesized function generator which generates also sinusoidal, square, pulse and arbitrary waveforms and, at last, a circuit simulator, called Dev2DUT. Dev2 implements the circuit, device under test, useful to perform several exercises and experimentation on electric circuits. All the electronic instruments are fully simulated and allows to manage all the main controls and displays which a real instrument includes so that the student may perform a real experimental practice without using an actual instrument. As an example, suppose we would carry an experiment on a particular circuit, say to measure the response of a RC low-pass filter. We need for that a sinusoidal generator, a digital scope, and obviously a low-pass filter circuit. To this purpose, the device under test, DEV2, will be configured as a low-pass filter. We select the circuit low-pass RC filter from the library. The filter schematic will appear with the default values of the components R1 and C1. We can set, as an example, the low-pass cutoff frequency of about 1 kHz. For this purpose, we use the default value of the resistance R1 at 1 kΩ. And, to have a cutoff frequency of 1 kHz, the capacitance should be set to 0 0.16 microfarad. At this point, we can delete all the unused instruments like the synthesized function generator, the vector voltmeter, the analog voltmeter, the spectrum analyzer, the digital counter, and the analog oscilloscope, leaving on the workbench only the instruments necessary for the experiment. We move these instruments on the screen in order to have a clean-up workbench. Operating on the signal generator, we set the signal frequency at 10 Hz. The waveform by default is sinusoidal, with the amplitude set to 5 V. We can change the amplitude to 8 V, for example. Now, we connect the output of the signal generator to the input connector of DUT. This signal can be shown on the digital scope screen by connecting the channel 1 of the scope with the DEV2 OUT1 test point. Push the wave channel 1 of the scope to see the channel 1 input. By default, the OUT1 test point is connected to the input node of the filter. Adjust the horizontal scale to represent conveniently the period of the input signal. Adjust the vertical scale to represent conveniently the amplitude of the input signal. 
Verify now the, test, the trigger menu of the oscilloscope. Select the trigger source on the channel 1. By default, the trigger signal source is on channel 1. The trigger position is indicated by the letter T on the bar in the top of the screen and, by default, correspond to zero level. Verify the effect of the trigger slope of the oscilloscope. The slope is set by default on the rising edge of the waveform. By changing the slope, the trigger is set on the descending edge of the waveform. We verify the effect of the trigger level of the oscilloscope. At this point, we connect the channel 2 of the digital scope to the OUT2 connector of the DEV2 to represent the signal at the circuit output. Select the OUT2 of DEV2 as V2, test point at filter output. Push the wave channel 2 of the scope to see also the channel 2 input. Adjust the vertical scale to represent conveniently the amplitude of the signal. Both the waveforms presented should appear of equal amplitude, since the signal frequencies is 10 Hz, which is very lower respect to the filter cutoff, which was set at 1 kHz. Set the signal frequency at 100 Hz. Adjust the horizontal scale to represent conveniently the period of the input signal. A small phase shift can be noted, while the amplitude is almost unchanged. Set the signal frequency at 1 kHz. Now we adjust the horizontal scale to represent conveniently the period of the input signal. The phase shift is about 45 degrees and the amplitude of the output voltage is reduced to about 5.6 volt. Values which correspond to the theoretical ones at the cutoff frequency. Now we can see the filter response to a, a square waveform. The output waveform is the classic sequence of exponential transient at 1 kHz. Set the signal frequency at 10 kHz. Adjust the horizontal scale to represent conveniently the period of the input signal. The waveform becomes pseudo-triangular as expected. Then we come back to the sinusoidal signal. We need to adjust the channel 2 vertical sensitivity since the frequency is one decad greater than the cutoff. Note the delay between the waveforms is about 25 microseconds. If we want to measure better this delay, we can use the time interval and frequency counter, so that we close the connections between the digital scope and DEV2. Then we close the digital scope and we open the counter, which is a two-channel frequency counter, able to measure the frequency of channel A, the period of channel A, the frequency of channel B, the ratio of the frequencies A and B, the time interval between the event A and the event B. The events A and B are defined by triggering the signals to the input channel A and channel B. By an adjustable trigger level and adjustable slope on channel A and similarly on channel B. Now we measure the frequency of the signal at the device input. 
we set the counter in order to measure the frequency of the signal applied to channel A, which is 10 kHz, and the corresponding period of the same frequency, which is 100 microseconds. Then, we can measure the time interval between channel A and channel B. The delay is, me is measured at trigger level 0 on both the signals A and B. Set the counter for the function TI A to B. The display shows the delay measured of 24 microseconds. In conclusion, this short demonstration show that EasyLab is a very useful home trainer for introducing the students to the electronic instrumentation knowledge and their wrangling. Simple experiments and exercises can also be carried out on basic electronic circuits and devices by measuring their responses under different waveforms excitation.